Our next speaker, Thomas Lundgren. Thanks. Okay. I don't smell that bad. You're leaving. <laughs> uh, I think we need to do something. We need to stand up. Help me with this one. Stand up, everybody. Everyone, stand up, stand up, stand up. We're talking about looking at the person. So now everybody turns right. This is the best part. Turn right. And then you give some massage to the person in front of you. Ah. Oh. Thank you. Oh. My turn. Oh, my turn. Okay. And then we turn left and we get back to the other person. Oh. Now you really start to know each other, okay? <laughs> Thomas, we're, Thank you. I think we're just, we're just about ready. It's going, the slides will be, there they are. Thomas, oh. it's all yours. Okay, that, that's good. Hi there, my name is Thomas. Uh, I hope I can inspire you about finding your own journey. And um, I need to ask you a question, and the question is, how many of you are insecure? Arms up. Okay. That's approximately 30%. I am insecure. That's why I'm standing here. And the rest of you who is not insecure, you should be here. So there's something wrong here. But probably that's what drives me, and that's what I'm going to talk about. So how do I find my own journey in life? And how can you maybe get some inspiration? That's how I looked when I was born, okay? I was born in Sweden. I um, had a happy childhood. And... Uh, my mother and me got into a blow when uh, I was five years old because my uh, father died. And from there on, I was driven by insecurities. I didn't see that. I was driven by success because I wanted to get what I didn't have. Um, success, of course, when you're in that age is, of course, and for many people all their life, is outside. So dream, success, happiness. Simple. And uh, I was also different. I, I, from the beginning of my life, I always figured out I was different. I couldn't understand why. When I got daughters, I figured it out when we went and checked one of my, my oldest daughter. I'm dyslectic. And because I was dyslectic, and in school, you have all these things. You should do mathematics, and you should spell right, and all these things, and get things right. That can be measurable. So I became very good at drawing. Because you can't really measure that. So I became very good at drawing, I did other things. I think actually what I'm best at is dreaming. I dream daytime, nighttime, all the time. About tomorrow. It's always about tomorrow. It's going to be better tomorrow, things are going to happen tomorrow. And of course that's outside in the world. So what happened was of course I needed to leave Sweden. So in 1983 I left to Saudi Arabia. 84, me and my partner in crime, my wife Eva, we moved to Kuwait. And there I became successful. Because the owner of the company I worked for, he had only two daughters, so I became his son. And he became my mentor. And now I'm successful. I was a big boss of a company I don't want to mention, that has four letters, and, uh, and, and sell something not so nice or like that. And basically, I was on my... I'm happy. This is per perfect, I thought. And then the invasion of Kuwait came. And overnight, everything was gone. And when everything was gone, the most important thing in life, I think, is that you should never, if, if you lose your dreams, look in Palestine, look in these places where the war, when things are happening, when people lose their dreams, there's nothing left. I still had my dreams. I was far down, but I had my dreams. And what happened in, um, around September 93 in Kuwait was that I woke up in the middle of the night. And how many of you have seen angels? Arms up. That's not too many. It's good I'm telling you because you really need to be prepared if it happens to you because I was not prepared. I woke up in the middle of the night, Kuwait, no drugs, no rock and roll. And, uh, <laughs> you know, there was an angel sitting in my bed this size. And I got so scared. I look at my wife, but for all men, you know that women never wakes up in the middle of the night. No help. I hide, I look up, I hide. It doesn't disappear. You need to speak to it. So I said, well, what do you want? And, and the angel, they, they speak telepathically, by the way, so you know that. She said, that's actually what you do. And she said, I have a mission for you. <laughs> Why me? You know? She said, you have to save the world. <laughs> for what? You know, I'm really, I mean, Saddam Hussein was still there. I was so scared. 
And it said basically, you have to save the world from all soulless, all these big corporations, these big boxes of retailers that has no soul. The moms and pops in the world are dying, and that's the mission we have, okay? So there I went off, and uh, it's all about feelings. For all women who have handbags here, or men who buy watches, you don't need another handbag or any other ha watch. What are you buying? Feel good. And the big corporations do not have that. And I think every leader, like Churchill actually should have said, uh, have said, I heard, uh, every leader should take the people from a place they are to a place they've never been. That's a leader's role, and that's why I have all these titles. CEO, executive. Executive, okay, fine, you can have executive also if you want, but that's just a small part. The part you need is to dream. The part you need is to take your people somewhere else. So I'm going to kind of finish my speech now because it's very simple, you know. Insecurity was, of course, pushing my dreams. I didn't know that. And that's going to be making me successful because there's nothing more strong to drive you than being afraid. And I'm happy. Simple, not. Do I look happy? Look at my tie. That's not very good. That's how it looked when we opened. And of course, we were not successful in the beginning. So we worked harder and harder and harder. And the important thing you learn, and if you have children, is, is you know, have a few rules and stick to them. And live what you talk. Don't say to your children, don't smoke, and you smoke. You've done two things. Number one, you basically have told them that you're lying to them, which is, of course, also another thing you told them that you're not supposed to do, and that you're hiding it for them. What are they going to do for you? The same thing. It's no difference between children, dogs, and employees. <laughs> I want some reaction to dogs because there's always someone who gets angry at me. I didn't say cats, by the way. Cats are individual. They're individualistic. I mean, try to have a cat. Come with me. It's never going to happen. <laughs> I have a dog with me all the time because he follows me. I feel very good. But we all, dogs, children, employees, we want to belong. Have you ever met someone who says, you know, in a company, do you want to work for a company you're not proud of? Who are you working for? I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> I mean, we want to be proud of our family. This is a part that in the teenage years where you maybe don't want to be proud. But the rest of the time, you want to be proud. And the same in a company. So you're going to get the best people working for you. This is what you need to do. And what really happened in my life was that I was still searching for my happiness. And then I did this for totally selfish reasons. I hired a handicapped boy, and I say handicapped because it's politically incorrect. Because he was handicapped for me. And I felt even better when he was a Palestinian boy, still with us, and he, when his father came, and his father came and cried in front of me, and I felt even better. And three months later, I got a phone call from the store manager, and she told me, can you come and see what happened? And in the store, he's not on the picture, in that store, he had changed the whole department. When he came in there, he got them all suddenly to be friends. Before that, there was these small problems. And I, that's the part where I realized he was there to teach us. And that's why in every store we have what we call challenged people. That's what we call them. They bring energy, they bring happiness, and they teach us lots of stuff. And that day we decided we're going to have them in the stores, we're going to have them all everywhere in the company, and we have a goal to have 5% of them in 2020 we're going to come to. But that's led to next dot, because life is about connecting dots, and I think I do that the whole time. That's probably what I'm best at, connecting dots and trying to get people to see them in my company. And if you ask the people in my company, they probably don't always see them, because I probably could explain them better. But paying it forward is what's happened next. Because our people in our stores who was with these uh, uh, challenged people, they got more and more excited about it. So now they wanted to do something good themselves. And now what we do basically in every store, we, have the, we do local volunteering and it's driven by each store. It comes from what they think is important. It comes from their heart because there's nothing more strong than what comes from your heart. What comes from your heart goes to your heart. And passion is everything, you know. Without passion, nothing extraordinary in the world have ever been achieved. Thank you. That was it. <laughs> no. Uh, so the point I'm trying to say is, does the world really need another retailer? No. We need a better world. 
And that led us to the last point, because you remember what the angels said. They said, change the world, save the world. I mean, hello. We're just right now still on local level. So we have a very, very modest goal, and that's global education. Very modest. But how are you going to change the world if you don't talk about education? How are you going to empower people to take care of their own life? Because that's what it is, to empower people to take care of their own life. And that's why we have started with the third dot, which is the global education. And now we are on the way, as you can see, as the company's purpose is to change the world. And we have done this since 1996. And you can do it too. You can do it. Changing the world means you can change someone's mood in a day. You can make someone happy who is unhappy. These small steps, small baby steps to the big steps. But you're at least going in the right direction. And so our big goal is a very small goal. It's in 2020, we will have 99 stores supporting 99 villages. To support them means, you know the story about the fish and the fishing rod? You don't give people who is starving fish, you give them a fishing rod to take care of their own life. That's important. And we started already last year in Kenya, in Pimbinet, and that was the first school uh, and village we're working with. So that's a small, modest goal we have. And if you look at this triangle, which I think explains it, if you get the whole thing that the challenge people and the local volunteering, which is the base for everything, and we get up to the big dream, which is helping out in the world. And I don't, I actually dislike the word CSR, corporate social responsibility. First of all, corporate is what I, that's what I, you can see, that's not what I want to be. So corporate is wrong, but it sounds like an order. You have to do corporate social responsibility. It has to come from your heart. So we have changed the word, and we have a new one, socially responsible investment. Because you're investing in the future. This is not fluffy stuff. This is not cute stuff. This is about return on investment. The better we do, the, better, the more good we can do. Putting this into a social business, making this, this is, again, I say it, this is about investment. This is not fluffy stuff. This is about our children's future. So what I want to say, I hope, if you're going to find your happiness, which I'm still searching for, I find it in glimpses, is that find your purpose, figure out what it is. It's probably you need to go through your, what you're afraid of, then start to live it. And if you start to live it, you for sure are going to find moments of that happiness. Because happiness is just a place where you're just going to disappear and find it. It's a journey. It's not a destination. And it fits perfect into what they say here. Connect your dots, so dream, do, be. Thank you.